The primary arterial strode for traveling north and south in Reno is Virginia Street, and it suffers from one major problem. It is choking on cars. The amount of traffic along this corridor is absolutely horrendous, and it's not a new problem either. Reno has spent decades incentivizing car travel while providing no adequate alternatives, so all sorts of trips are pooled into cars that are clogging the transit corridor. Discussions on how to improve traffic along this arterial began back in the early 2000s. One of the key goals of RTC's 30-year transportation plan was to expand the use of mass transit to ensure Virginia Street doesn't become choked in gridlock as the population hits 550,000 people. At the time, mass transit only accounted for 10% of trips taken along Virginia Street, and they wanted to increase that number to 30%. In 2005, officials of the Regional Transportation Commission outlined plans for mass transit between Mount Rose Highway and Virginia Street. One idea was a monorail system, which would cost around $60 to $100 million per mile. A more sensible option was a light rail solution, which would only cost between $30 and $60 million per mile. Light rail can mean a lot of things, but in this context, it would basically be a tram running up and down Virginia Street. The reason a tram may be considered is because it's basically a nicer bus on rails. Since each car is connected to each other, you can increase capacity by just adding another segment, whereas a bus would need both another bus and another driver. It is worth considering in busy places where people would benefit from a walking extender. Unfortunately, the chance of either option was said to be remote. RTC officials had more confidence in a bus rapid transit solution since the cost was estimated to be only $40 million for the entire project. Talks about light rail transit tend to be downgraded to bus rapid transit due to concerns of not having enough ridership to justify the cost of a tram line. RTC proposed an initial bus route running from the University of Nevada, Reno to Meadowood Mall, and this eventually became Route 1. There were additional plans to extend the route to Mount Rose Highway and to add another bus rapid transit line to link Reno and Sparks along 4th Street and Prater Way. One of these plans would eventually become the Rapid Lincoln Line, which functions as bus rapid transit that connects downtown Reno with downtown Sparks. Sadly, the extension to Mount Rose Highway never actually happened. RTC is still awaiting additional funding in order to bring buses further south of Reno. Streetcars weren't out of the question, though. In 2009, there were plans to eventually phase out bus rapid transit with a tram line running up and down Virginia Street. As reported by the Reno Gazette Journal, the Reno City Council approved a plan to convert to streetcars and light rail, and the plan was split into three separate phases. The first phase added a new route, the Rapid, which would stop at 14 stations that represented 60% of Route 1's ridership. Route 1 was rebranded to the Rapid Connect, which would bring people to the stops that weren't serviced by the Rapid. I have already complained about this on a previous video, so I won't dwell on it too much here. It just seems like a tremendous waste to throw away good money on rebranding the route when you already have one. In hindsight, it looks like it would have been a better use of the funds to expand the route instead of rebrand it with new buses that are hard to tell apart. Phase 2 of this project would have installed rails from the Lawler Events Center at the University of Nevada, Reno to California Avenue. Then, Phase 3 would further extend the streetcar all the way to the convention center. Sadly, Phases 2 and 3 never happened, so the rapid bus stops that are dotted along Virginia Street are a remnant of the older plan to add light rail transit. Later, in 2015, a group of people named the Reno Streetcar Coalition tried to stir up interest in building the streetcar line. They argued that a streetcar line would promote mixed-use pedestrian-friendly developments near the transit system. They also presented additional benefits, such as attracting more ridership, reducing air pollution and energy consumption, and stimulating the economy. They even managed to appear on local news stations, such as Blake Smith talking with Channel 2 News here. 
it's also a huge economic uh, engine for development. Anytime that you see streetcars or trolleys that are developed, there's, there's typically anywhere from 16 to 60 times this, the investment on each side for three blocks back. They were unable to secure funding, and the group dissolved shortly thereafter. Being a transit rider in Reno can be frustrating for this exact reason. Tripling transit ridership is an ambitious goal, but it requires bold actions to do so. It's not exactly a great sign when the message is, we want to increase ridership without spending too much on the kinds of investments that would increase ridership. When talks about light rail are downgraded to bus rapid transit, then money is spent on special buses when there are already buses for the same corridor, and the route is never extended to locations that were discussed in original plans, the goal begins to feel increasingly less attainable. Transit is simply not seeing the right kinds of investments in order to get people out of their cars and into public transportation. People who don't understand transit like to come up with their own weird explanations for why we cannot have better transit in North America. The Reno Gazette Journal even managed to interview one of these people, who said, The mentality of folks here is not to ride a bus. We're an automobile community. It's kind of the wild waste. I don't know if that's what he actually sounded like, but that's how it reads in my head. This is something that people genuinely believe. Transit just doesn't work in the U.S. because of cultural differences. Either that or this country was built for the car or some other excuse. Here's the kicker though. Reno used to have streetcars. The last major addition to transit was the Rapid Lincoln Line. If anyone was waiting for the bus inside 4th Street Station during the construction of that route, they may have seen an advertisement for the Lincoln Line that looked like this. The image on the right-hand side comes from a photograph titled, Crowd Going to Jeffries and Johnson Fight. On July 4th, 1910, people flocked to Reno in droves to see the fight of the century between Jack Johnson and James J. Jeffries. Behind the crowd is a line of streetcars that were operated by the Reno Traction Company. According to the Reno Historical Society, a group of businessmen named the Nevada Transit Company opened the first streetcar line in Nevada on Thanksgiving Day in 1904. The company's barn stood at 911 East 4th Street near Morrill Avenue. For the price of 10 cents, someone could travel from Reno to Sparks at the breathtaking speed of 10 miles per hour and arrive to their destination within only 30 minutes. The initial route traveled from Reno's downtown railway node eastward to Sparks, turning south just before Deer Park, then east again to the Southern Pacific Roundhouse and Rail Yards. Tracks along the Reno end ran westward along 4th Street to Sierra Street, then south to 2nd Street, east to Virginia Street, and by January of 1905, south again to the Truckee River. It was later expanded to add additional tracks to the University of Nevada, Reno. In 1906, the service was purchased and renamed to the Reno Traction Company. The Reno Sparks Line was the most popular route, generating 80% of all ridership. It was used heavily by commuting workers, shoppers, and pleasure seekers heading to Waylands Park, which was later known as Coney Island. In 1906, a separate company named the Nevada Interurban began placing down tracks to create an additional streetcar connection from Reno to Moana. This route traveled down Pluma Street until reaching the site of the Moana Hot Springs. It doesn't look like much today, but at the time, Moana Springs offered an abundance of activities to the community of Reno and its visitors. A portion of the property was excavated to create a lake for winter ice skating and summer boating. A dance hall and bar were constructed, and an outdoor dancing pavilion was erected. By 1907, the Nevada Interurban Street Railway established a regular service line connecting the property to the city limits. The Nevada Interurban originally wanted this line to extend all the way to Lake Tahoe, but that never really happened. Concepts like walkability and transit-oriented developments are not new. Prior to the popularization and overutilization of the automobile, it was just the way of building things. 
Some people did have cars, but they weren't the dominant form of transportation, so the space could feel shared between automobiles, bikes, carriages, and people. Suggesting that this country was built for the car blatantly ignores the history. It's more accurate to say this country was built on railroads and streetcars. In the early 1900s, cities all across this country were building their own transit systems to act as walking extenders to make the dense urban environments feel easier to traverse. It does go to show that if there are people who need to get from point A to point B, there are people who could be riding transit. And that still rings true today. Rather than using a lack of ridership as a reason not to invest more in transit, it should be evidence that the transit needs to be better, especially if people are already taking their cars through the corridor anyway. If Reno could support streetcar lines before it was even named the biggest little city in the world, then it was never really too little to support a tram line. The problem is, the transit is not doing a good enough job servicing transportation to the key locations around the transit line. The excuses people provide for why transit doesn't work in Reno or other cities across North America are just that, excuses. The real reason Reno doesn't have a better transit system isn't because of population or lack of ridership, it's because the city stopped building for transit and instead only allowed cars to flourish. And today, we are seeing the consequences of those actions. Sadly, streetcars in Reno were fairly short-lived. As the popularity of automobiles soared, ridership dwindled, and with more cars on the road, they caused additional wear and tear to the tracks. This resulted in increased maintenance costs, thus making each of the lines less affordable. In 1919, the Reno Traction Company was forced to end service along every line with the exclusion of the Reno Sparks route. From 1920 to 1926, revenue continued to dwindle, to the point where the deficit resulted from operations. On June 15, 1927, the Nevada Transit Company began operating a competing bus line between Sparks and Reno, which further cut into revenue. The Reno Traction Company was forced to end service on the Reno Sparks line, thus being essentially replaced with an intercity commuter bus service. As for the Nevada Interurban, that route was abandoned one year prior. The tracks were removed from the ground, which is considered a clear sign that the automobile age had fully arrived. Today, the site that was once home to the Reno Traction Company's car barn is now occupied by an auto repair business. The history behind Reno's streetcar line is basically gone, and when you look at the city today, you wouldn't think that there used to be streetcars running up and down the downtown streets. Over time, Reno became increasingly more crowded with cars. These images from the 1950s better reflect the feel of Reno's downtown than any of the images shown previously. So much of the space is reserved for cars, giving the impression that the downtown area feels like less of a place to live in and more of a place to drive through. For generations, urban planning decisions have bent over backwards to maximize the comfort of car travel to the point where more traditional developments have been forgotten, leading to the myth that America was built for the car. It wasn't just Reno either. Plenty of other cities across the United States had fairly impressive streetcar networks. As private automobiles became more popular, streetcar systems across this country started to be choked by cars. According to a report from Vox, the streetcars died because cars were allowed to drive on the streetcar tracks, causing additional wear and tear and adding congestion to the streetcar lines. Once just 10% or so of people were driving, the tracks were so crowded that the streetcars weren't making their schedules. Anywhere that failed to provide dedicated right-of-way for their transit system was doomed. With 160,000 cars cramming onto Los Angeles streets in the 1920s, for example, mass transit riders complained of massive traffic jams and hour-long delays. Between dwindling ridership and increased maintenance costs, streetcar companies simply couldn't compete with an uneven playing field, and they slowly delved into bankruptcy. This led to the death of public transit in North America. Private cars didn't replace streetcars because of a natural order of technological progression. It's because a lot of space is needed to accommodate cars, so if everyone drives, the roadways become too congested for more spatially efficient modes of transit. 
If someone is given the choice between being stuck in traffic on a bus or in their own car, most people are going to choose their own car. But in doing so, they are really just adding one more car to the problem. It's kind of sad thinking of this history because it sort of implies that Reno and other cities in this country are still building their way up to the transit that existed in the early 1900s. Going back to the opening of the Rapid Lincoln Line, it feels like an admission that the Reno Spark Streetcar Line offered an invaluable service and it was a mistake to get rid of it. It's too bad that cities with streetcar networks and interurban rail lines couldn't have been more protective of the transit that already existed. When I look at the state of the Rapid Virginia Line and the Rapid Lincoln Line today, no lessons from history have been learned. The entire reason the streetcar line died is because it had to share the space with everyone's private cars. As long as bus rapid transit lines lack dedicated right-of-way, it tells me that not only is a streetcar not going to happen in the foreseeable future, but Reno isn't even ready for one. Transit should not feel like this much of an afterthought. It should be prioritized as a means to spur sustainable growth within the city. It should be to provide an accessible means of traversing the places people live in, and it should be used to shape the city itself. The Reno we see today is a product of incentivizing car travel for decades while providing anemic investments to transit infrastructure, which pushes more people into cars and makes transit feel useless unless someone is either poor or desperate. If this is an undesirable future for Reno, there needs to be a greater push to having fewer drivers and more emphasis on alternatives. Progress isn't a straight arrow that always points to the future. Sometimes we do make mistakes, and abandoning our transit systems in favor of investing exclusively in cars is one of those mistakes. Urban planners from before the popularization of the automobile were onto something, and we must return to more traditional developments that prioritize walkability and transit-oriented developments. Trams have changed a lot in the past 100 years. Plenty of other countries still use them, and we should too because the alternative, doubling down on cars, will only continue to clog and choke every single street that makes up the places we live in.